Hello guys and welcome back to another episode here on my crypto journal. Today we're going to be covering the usuals, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and the altcoins that you guys see on the thumbnails because those are the coins we are going to be paying attention to for this next bull cycle. I think these are going to be some of the top performers. Of course there are going to be others out there but these are somewhat relatively safe minus Luxo because it's a small cap and I think their charts look pretty decent. So if you want to keep up to date I do release videos four times a week and make sure to subscribe to catch each and every one of them. Also, don't forget to smash the like button because we're about to get started. So here we have Bitcoin and we're getting a little bit of a bleed right now. And if you guys have been watching this channel and have been paying attention, then you guys would know this doesn't really come as a surprise because we had all this resistance just waiting for us. And not only that, we also have announcements tomorrow coming out from the FOMC to see whether the basis point hike is going to be actually 25 like we expect it to be. Most likely it will be which means it's already priced in. If it comes out to be 25, I don't expect much movement from the market. If it comes out to be 50, that will be pretty bearish for the market. And if it comes out to be zero, that should send Bitcoin and risk assets up. But even if we do manage to get up here, we still have this major resistance. And if, like we covered in last time's video, we've got one instance in which Bitcoin was able to crack through all the resistance and just shoot up. So that is definitely a possibility. And could happen here but what's more likely is that we might get a little bit of a smash down before we continue up many people are currently sidelined on the bitcoin move right here and are hoping to get buys lower and usually when people are looking to get buys lower the market will not give it to them because max pain is to the upside so they have more incentive to push this price up higher and have them buy these highs right here and psychologically manipulate them to get in at a bad price. Here's a tweet I made back in November 10th. This was, I think, during the FTX collapse. This is the doom and gloom we see near the bottom. People would be too afraid to buy these levels, waiting for the dust to sell it all first, and then it will be time. We'll sell my bags in a couple of years when the world talks about crypto again. So down here, nobody really wanted to touch crypto. They thought it was a scam because FTX collapsed. And that's a misconception because Bitcoin isn't really tied to an exchange. Sure, it's a sentiment. And with time, sentiments just disappear. And the technology stays if it's actually solid and will provide a service or a utility in the future and i've been in this space for quite some times so i've already been through the emotions and what it feels like to think crypto might be actually going away and it never ended up happening and i did miss in some buy-in from previous experiences but i've learned from those and i've learned that when everybody's scared and nobody wants to touch it and we get to value buy areas meaning we've already been to 69k and we've fallen 76 percent this might be a good time to buy whereas the average joe what they'll usually do is they will see the price go up and be like, wow, Bitcoin's gonna change the world, it's gonna end 100x from here. Wow, Bitcoin's gonna change the world, it's gonna 100x from here. And they don't wanna touch it when it's down here because they're like, oh, not enough people are in it and I kind of feel scared, so you know, I'm not gonna touch it. Whereas people who are experienced think the opposite. They're just gonna sell to the people who come in later and buy up here, for instance. So now this isn't me saying we're not gonna get to go possibly lower or retest this level. This is me saying that I will not sell value area buys because I'm scared. This is money I'm willing to part with. This is money I'm willing to take a bet on and say, I think the technology is here to stay. I think blockchain will weather the regulatory storm. It will be painful maybe. Maybe we'll see a 50% drop from here. But I'm not interested in selling this level only to buy back at 12,000 and then sell higher. Because, I mean, if you measure that out, let's say you bought at 16. You know, that's a 20% drop. Can I stomach a 20% drop? Yeah, I possibly can. Do I think Bitcoin is going to 9,000? Okay, uh, let's call it a... 40% drop. Can I stomach a 40% drop if they declare we're in a recession and things get really bad? I personally could stomach a 40% drop. It wouldn't be pleasant. It would definitely be painful. But again, I believe in technology. I believe that in a long enough time frame, crypto and blockchain will come out on top. And we're talking about investments here, not trading. Trading is a whole different ballgame. I'm not going to be talking about trading here publicly. I might do it privately down the road. But right now, let's talk about the investing because Bitcoin, I think, has some room to punish people to the upside. Whether we get above here is going to be a surprise. This is a lot of resistance. We had the resistance from back here when we tried to rally above 25K. It didn't really work. It was a 40% pump. And now we've got the 200 week and the 50 week moving average just coming down to smash us. We haven't even touched them yet, which suggests, okay, we could still rally tomorrow or during the weekend when the FOMC meeting is behind us. But remember, we still have CPI data coming out, so that's also something to keep in mind. Regardless of what happens here, guys, I'm not planning on selling. This is just to keep track of what is happening with Bitcoin's price and whether the chart looks good. In other words, if we look at the monthly, that is a solid monthly candle right there. That eliminated one, two, three, four, four months of downward pain in one candle. And you can see why we're getting a little bit of a sell-off right now. If we go to the monthly, 
it's the moving average it's pushing us down so clearly there's going to be some selling here by the algos by the by the people who are keeping track of this moving average but if we manage to really climb above 25k that's going to be extremely bullish for bitcoin the next target on btc here is around 30,000 or 28,000 somewhere around 28 to 30,000 so that's going to be the next target to keep your eye on so let's move on to ethereum and see what it's doing on the monthly because this will be interesting and ethereum is actually doing something different it's actually got the support of the monthly moving average on ethereum let's go to this chart it's a little better and you guys can see there it is there's a support, and it doesn't really have much resistance above it so ethereum actually looks more bullish than bitcoin on the dollar pair for now though it got pretty close to breaking it and it pierced it a couple of times it didn't quite stay below other than this candle right here but then we really managed to pump it with BTC's pump this month. So I would say Ethereum is slightly more bullish and Ethereum suggests to me that we're going to be trading sideways unless we break, you know, above 2000, which we're not really close to that yet. We need another $400 to be pumped into the market. We'll see if we get those in a couple of weeks. But if we take a look at the weekly, it's more of a mess. We've got a lot of resistance ahead of us. This blue moving average coming down to hit us and knock us down. And then this will be no man's land down here. We've simply got too much obstruction going on on ethereum's price and then we've got the resistance at 2400 so for a price action i'm expecting something you know like this to come out of ethereum and then we arrange for maybe the next four months uh mid-year to possibly december uh december tends to be a very important time for crypto whether it's a bottom or a top aka it really gets either bearish or really bullish so ethereum it's been ranging it looks stronger than bitcoin does and the sbtc pair is holding we've got support coming up on the green moving average if we break below that though we're gonna have to correct down to this bottom of the range and if that happens and btc drops then ethereum is probably going back down to the range at around a thousand dollars meeting us at the moving average here for the 300 week down there to support us so we still have a lot of support for ethereum even if we do go down which supports my theory that we might be trading sideways for a while on ethereum Moving on, let's just check up on Litecoin and see what it's doing because we had an idea that it might pump up to possibly 104. I think I had a circle. There we go. There's a circle you guys can see. And we've got the, we're creeping up on the level. We just entered it last week and now we're pushing up. We're passing the 300 week and the 200 week is coming up with a lot of resistance at 102. So just like Bitcoin, we have a little bit more room on BTC to run as well as Litecoin and Litecoin has been leading the pack. And you guys can see that we still have a tiny bit more room. We already passed the hard part of this moving average. So we'll see. There's a little bit of weakness on the MACD. It's not looking too hot. We've got a little bit of bearish divergence as well, I believe. You can see that it's trying to come back up, which it does look kind of strong. It's a little hard to read right now. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to gain enough momentum for us to really create a more bullish sign. So I would say 103 should give us some breaks on the Litecoin move because from the bottoms, it's pumped up a lot. That's 135%. Take it up there, it's 150%. And that's pretty big. Litecoin isn't a small coin. But overall, looking pretty bullish. So this might be the beginning of the bull run, which takes time to get going. I mean, if we look at what happened back here, uh, the signs of the start of a bull run started at December 2018, but didn't really get going until a year and three months later. So even though this might be the beginning, it might take a long time for it to really get going and this is what i mean this is the really get going part this stuff was nice this stuff was okay don't get me wrong but this is what i'm looking for i'm looking for the meat of the move and to break all-time highs which litecoin really didn't it just topped out which is not a great sign for litecoin but that's not the topic of this video so let's move on to our altcoins that we are keeping track of because well the markets are moving and they have made slight moves so adam you know 16 dollars is going to be very very heavy resistance it's bleeding right now might revisit this trend line down here if it does i'm not really looking to buy although I would love to grab me some atom i just I, I want it a lot cheaper i just don't like buying when it's up 30 40 percent but the structure is more bullish than your regular altcoins and there are a handful of those like luxo we've been covering on this channel but i really don't want to buy this uh, if we get a more of a bleed i might consider buying it i just think we have more room to correct on the atom btc pair I need lower valuations for me to start buying Adam. But as I've talked about before many times, bullish chart, great stuff. I'm looking into the ecosystem and we have coins here for Adam. Let me just share it with you that are on the top 100, which bodes well for Adam. It means people are using the ecosystem and it's valued pretty highly. It's called Osmosis right there. It's like the decks of Adam. 
kind of like we have Uniswap on Ethereum. This is the DEX for Atom. And there are other protocols on Atom, like Akash Network and others, but they're just not on the top 100 page. So I've been looking into the total value locked into Atom to see what kind of usage it has on the network. And it's, it's good. It's great. I don't, it doesn't explain why this chart is looking as great as it does. So I'm going to continue to do more digging, but I'm digging more into dot. So let's move into that to see what's going on with the dot chart today. And well, dot, you know, I, I have one thing to say about it. And that is that these buys right here, it was really important to identify the bottom buys. I didn't get them on Adam because I was more focused on dot anyway, but to get us to $4 took a lot, you know, it took a FTX collapse to get us all the way down there. It took DCG scares. Maybe they sold off some polka dot. So these prices right here, the ones I collected down here, I'm not looking to sell for a long time. I don't mind if we range, which Polkadot might do compared to Adam because it hasn't put in a big of a recovery move from the bottom. I, I mean, Adam went from $6 to 14 and that's about a, or not 14, it went to 16, which is almost a triple. That's 150%. So let's measure 150%. For, for Dot to catch up to Adam, it needs to go back all the way up to about 11 Dollars. So Polkadot just has way more work to do in terms of putting in structure because it's lagging behind. But I've been looking into the DOT ecosystem and I like what I'm seeing. One of the biggest blockchains on Polkadot is actually Glimmer. And on this marketplace, Tofu NFT, they've got these Glimmer apes. And I don't know whether these are going to be worth much, but people are building in it. There's a community here of people who are really passionate about projects like these. So I know there's things happening within the polka dot ecosystem and not only that but we also have the ave of polka dot over here with 300 million dollars locked so there is usage happening on the polka dot app it's just not being reflected which i think is because back in the bull cycle polka dot was just released while not having the ecosystem built out and flushed out and the community wasn't there it was just too new to get any traction so maybe in this next cycle once everybody gets more familiar with what's going on you know with glimmer apes who knows if this will be big but if it does the people who are early might get lucky. And then we've got uh, Parallelify, you know, major to total value lock generating protocol revenues that more people will get acquainted with. And there's more D apps out there that people will use kind of like what happened on Ethereum. And as long as they have real yield, it'll attract users. And that's how Polkadot will grow. As for now, what I'm looking for in terms of positive structure, again, we still have to break out of this downtrend on dot ethereum which is not managed to do you guys can see we hit the top of that trend and we are rejected so we really want to see us break above to 004 and even higher breaking above to 005 would be the positive price structure that i'm looking for i wanted to find a bottom okay we have one bottom here that it created which is very fast very wiki not really reliable but we have the second one here which coincides with the bottom here and if if dot can just start to form some kind of bottoming pattern then we can start to say, okay, dot's starting to look bullish and it's got a shot to run into $11. So again, lots of work for polka dot to do, but what I'm finding about it during my research is giving me more confidence in the project rather than looking like it might be a lost cause. So finally, let's take a look at Luxo. I covered it yesterday on my channel. So I'm going to run through it really lightly because this video is getting to be a little long. The Luxo S pair, the chart is still looking nice, slowly correcting. And this does take a while to correct, but you can see every time we touch the bottom of this trend, Buys come in, buys come in, buys come in. Guess what's going to happen if we touch back down here in the ed end of Feb to early March? I assume buys are going to come back in. The price of Luxo here is consolidating, which is really bullish. But the problem is we're consolidating at resistance, and I don't like that. I want to see us fall back down, give me the buy I want, and then I'll continue to hold this, possibly stake it, and sell it to whoever's willing to buy it at these higher levels. If this is a project that's going to have some legs, then I want to hold this project for the long term because you hold on to your winners. And especially since we have validating coming up, maybe I want to va validate some blocks and earn some passive income, depending on how this chart looks in the future. So we're going to have to wait and see. I think all these coins have massive potential and we're going to cover them all the way to the late end of the bull cycle. And we'll see whether these coins actually are going to stick around for the next cycle. For now, let's work on what's going to happen in the closest cycle and we'll see whether other projects come out to trump these ones. So if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to stick around, hit that like and subscribe button because it does motivate me to create these videos for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Happy trading and safe investing.